This box contains the largest piece of terrain ever built. It started last December when my friend Mike from Net1 Videos called me and asked if I wanted to do a collaboration build. I was up for that, so we did a bit of brainstorming to see what we would build. Since we're both Lord of the Rings nerds, it's no surprise that we settled on one of the most dramatic locations in the series, and the most likely to get a stern warning from the Health and Safety Office, the Bridge of Khazad Dum. We agreed that I'd make the crevasse and the bridge, while Mike would make the surrounding area. This video is the story of how I built it. I'm Carl, and this is Carl Makes Stuff. Before I started cutting anything, I fired a blender to make some rough plans. You could easily do this on a piece of paper, but I like this as it's easier to shift things around and get an idea of the volumes. Since we wanted the piece to be playable, I planned for it to be 4 feet long in total, so it could sit along the side of a 4 foot gaming table. The crevasse is impossible except at the bridge, so having it go across the table would create some very annoying gameplay, unless you're playing a very specific scenario. In the Fellowship of the Ring, the bridge is set to be 50 feet long, so taking the convention of 1 inch to 5 feet gives us a 10 inch span. Adding an inch thick wall to either side makes it a full foot wide, so it should fit nicely with other modular boards. Since I also had to consider shipping and storage, I decided to split the piece into sections, as a 1 foot by 4 piece would uh, not pass. I went with 1 by 1 foot sections and 1 1 by 2 section, with the bridge centered on it. I briefly considered breaking up one of the smaller sections in half so the bridge could be centered on a 3x3 table, but realistically one third of the board would be impossible and playing on that wouldn't be a lot of fun. This piece had to travel quite a long way, so I made it a bit sturdier than the usual foam build while keeping it light enough that it wouldn't cost an arm and a leg to ship. Making the base and sides out of plywood would solve both, so I got out a sheet of 5mm and laid it on top of some foam to cut it. Now, this is probably one of the worst ways to get precise cuts. If you have an access to uh, a table saw or a circular saw, absolutely use them. In my case, I don't have a table saw and I don't want to be the guy who runs a circular saw in the middle of the night, so I got out my knife. It's not the most efficient, but if you don't have any power tools, you can still get stuff done. Just use repeated light cuts and a metal ruler and you'll be fine. Once you have your pieces, you can plane down the edges or give them a light sanding to get them completely flat for gluing. To glue everything together, I use these plastic corner clamps. If you don't have them, you can use blocks of wood with right angles and regular clamps. If you wrap the blocks in clear tape, the PVA won't stick to them. Regardless of what you use, make sure you glue all your pieces the same way. Either all of them with the sides glued on top of the bases, or all of them with the sides glued to the edges of the base. Using a plastic sheet is also a good idea. Now, these pieces are jointed, which would be fine if they were going to stay here. To take a riding cargo, not so much, so I needed to make them a bit stronger. I drilled some holes through the bottom and sides, dripped in some glue and hammered a kebab stick through each one. It's not a very sophisticated way of doing this, but if you're here looking for sophistication, you my friend are clearly watching the wrong channel. Once the glue set, I cut the sticks flush and lightly sanded over so they wouldn't be visible. With all that in place, I now had some trays to build my ravine in. To build up the sides, I glued in slightly oversized slabs of foam and trimmed them down to get a clean fit. When you're doing this, just be careful you don't cut into the plywood as you go. I also left a bit clear in the center of the larger piece, so I'd have a place to glue in the piers for the bridge. Next, I added the piers, which are just lumps of foam cut to shape. The reason I gave them this tail is to give them more glue surface area and allow at least a small part of them to be in contact with the wooden structure. This way they're less likely to break if someone puts a heavy miniature on them. In hindsight, it's probably not a big issue with plastic miniatures, but I am mentally stuck in the age of metal, so there's that. To give the foam a rocky texture, I made some cuts into it and scooped bits out with my knife to make scalloped cuts. I like the end result on this, but if you try this on a large surface, either wear a glove or take frequent breaks, or you will get friction burns on your thumb. At this point I had some kind of edge profile, so I added in some magnets. 
To align the magnet, I put a dot of paint on one piece and push the next piece onto it so it gets matching dots. Since I had three parts to this build, I made sure to register all the dots of the same size so they can go together in any combination. Then I used a piece of heated wire to make holes for the magnets and epoxy them in. These magnets aren't strong enough to hold the piece fast together. They're just there to keep the piece aligned so if someone accidentally gets too excited and bumps into the table, they're not all going to go flying apart. With the piers in place, I rolled up a ball of aluminum foil and added some more texture to everything. To build the bridge itself, I transferred the measurement onto a piece of paper and used that to carve out an arch. I also used a piece of sandpaper wrapped around the can to get a smooth curve, which in hindsight was totally useless as I just carved it to a rock texture second laser. Obviously the big scene at the bridge is Gandalf facing off against the Balrog, where the bridge ends up broken. Mike and I had discussed if we wanted to do a before or after, and agreed we wanted both. So I need to make part of the bridge removable. To do this, I carefully cut out the center part of the bridge, making sure both cuts were angled up. This is important as the angle means that the central piece will be supported when it is on in place, and it's easy to pop it out of place by pushing it up. To make it more stable, I also added in a few magnets to either side. Just to be clear, I am not a massive fan of magnets in terrain, but there are places where they have their uses. In this case especially, it let me handle the bridge as one piece, so I could get it to line up nicely. I cut a hole into each pier, and glued the bridge into place. After this, I needed to clean up what I had so far, so I slopped on some filler in the gaps and spread it around with a wet brush. This prevents it from clogging up the texture too much. I wanted to have some bricks on either side to create a solid visual crossing point, so it doesn't matter so much if the terrain on either side doesn't match exactly. This is important as Mike and I have clearly different styles, so this would make it easier to blend them together. I scrubbed my first attempt pretty early on as it would be nearly impossible to match up these styles neatly to anything else, even if I was doing it myself. Instead, I took them all off and replaced them with a straight row of bricks, which looks more like a border. If I had been designing this from scratch, I would have added a low wall to one side, as I imagined the dwarves would have both to have cover and to prevent their stuff from rolling off accidentally. However, it's pretty explicitly described as not having any such feature, so I left that out. Dwarves like to live dangerously, apparently. Instead of carefully lining up the bricks to the edge, I just plop them on and then slice them off once the glue had set. On the piers leading to the bridge, I went for these 45 degree angles which mimic the style of the dwarven pillars from the movie, and filled in the rest with more slabs. On the bridge itself, I just added stone slabs. Here I was careful to make sure that the slabs lined up at the edges and didn't prevent the center from uh, being placed or removed. When the pieces are painted, the paint on the sides where the magnets are will get eaten away very quickly as they are constantly bumped and moved together. To avoid having the bare foam or the white filler show through, I mixed some uh, black paint into the filler and covered them over. I should have added more paint or used ink as the mix did end up too grey after sanding, but it should still work well enough. To add more texture before I seal everything up, I put a whole lot of watered down PVA glue on the flat surfaces near the bricks and dumped sand and sawdust over them. Then I sealed this down with more PVA glue and 99% alcohol. I wanted to spray the wooden parts black, so to protect the remaining exposed foam, I just painted it over with PVA glue and black paint before spraying. The last thing to do was definitely the hardest, and that was packing it up without painting it. Still, I know it's going to be in good hands. Mike is fantastic at painting terrain, and with him painting all the sections, it's going to tie together even better. Besides, I'm kind of curious as I have never had anything I made painted by anyone else. Sometimes we go to compensate for the mistakes in building with painting, so I'm interested to see how this does without that scratch. It was around this time that George from the Pickle Jar and Paul from the Station joined the project to paint some miniatures for the scene. Both are epic level painters, and I know Paul paints up armies in less time than it takes me to paint one miniature, so I'm really looking forward to see what the end result looks like. I'm preparing this video at the end of May, so I have not seen the finished project yet. But by the time it goes online, the whole thing will be complete, 
and you'll find links to videos of their part in the project at the end screen and in the description below as well as a link to a video where we'll be showing off the entire project that's about it for me today big thanks go to Mike for asking me to join this because it's not the kind of thing I would build for myself and it sure was a lot of fun thank you for watching this video and I do hope you will check out the videos from the other guys see you around, stay safe and have fun